Hey ho, this is uh, Marco Catanio representing Charles Sturt University with another study aid for the subject ITI 597, the subject that covers IT service management according to ITIL version 3. Uh, in this topic, we're going to have a look at people, processes, products, and partners. Yeah, where would we be without like the products, the technology? But then equally true is like the question like is where would we be without people? And again, equally true is the question where would we be without processes and where would we be without partners? In other words, they're all important areas that are part of like managing like an IT environment or managing your IT infrastructure. Okay, so it's like you need to find a balance, a balance between your people, your processes, your products and your partners. That's how you manage IT. So let's talk a little bit about people, okay, without going into too much detail because otherwise this video will take like eight hours. Because of course people are one of our most important assets. We want people with enough skills and experience. We want people with the right amount of knowledge. We want people with a can-do and a will-do attitude. We want to make sure we've got the right supporting culture in place because without the proper supporting culture, idle is never going to work. We need like leaders and managers to do the job. We need to manage turnover and attrition. We want to make sure that people are able to collaborate with each other. We want to be able to like we may, we want to make sure they are able to like share their knowledge and create a bit of like a team spirit. So we want to make sure we've got enough capabilities and resources in place to do the job properly. We want to make sure our people are satisfied in their in their job. And we need some passion, okay? Can without passion it's never going to work. We also need a proper supporting structure. If you think of like how you organize all your functions, uh, there are there, is, there are certain structures that that are better in supporting like an idle or an idolized environment. We need to be able to deal with conflicts, and very important, we need to communicate with each other. So people, let's see. It says here, people make the organization's clock tick. People make the organization's clock tick. So, what about processes? What do we find in a process-based environment? Well, we find policies. Policies that tell us why we work the way we work. We need process descriptions that tell us, like, how we're doing our work. We need procedures, like clear, clear documents that give us the steps to go through, to go from A to Z. We need work instructions, like detailed descriptions on, like, how to do a certain activity. We need role descriptions. Who is doing what? We want to make sure that our IT processes are properly aligned with our IT goals, are properly aligned with our business requirements. We want to make sure that the processes are clear to the ones eh, that are going to use them. We want to make sure that documentation is accessible, usable, transferable. In other words, we want to create like a mature process-based environment where the things we do become repeatable, measurable, improvable, but at the same time stay flexible and are scalable. So processes, what does it say? It says here, processes make the organization's clock run on time. Processes make the organization's clock run on time. And then we've got products, so the technology. Of course, the products, we need to find like a business and IT match. We want to make sure that the technology properly supports the business processes. They need to be user-friendly. Of course, not too expensive. They need to perform properly. We want proper support for our tools and technologies. The tools and technologies, they need to be available and maintainable. We want to make sure they're scalable as well, portable, compatible with other products. Flexible in like, eh, if for example, if you think of tailoring and, and customizing, like so, tailoring and customizing the tools to our own needs, our own specific needs. So in other words, we want tools that are fit for purpose and fit for use. Eh? We want like, we want like a uh, utility and we want like warranty coming from those tools. And of course the tools optimally should be, yeah, we should be able to integrate them with our environment. So what about tools? It says here, products slash tools make the organization's clockwork. Products make the organization's clockwork.
So what about partners? Yeah, what about partners? <laughs> we want to make sure we want to make sure they deliver like optimal value for money, of course. We want to make sure they deliver the right products and services that we need to deliver our services to our customers. We need to manage the legal relationship with our suppliers, with our partners. Uh, we want to make sure that they've got the right resources and the right capabilities now and in the future to fulfill our requirements. How flexible are they? Are we in a win-win situation with them? Do we trust them? Do we have the right contracts in place? Oh, by the way, when do they expire and, and when do they renew? So what about the duration of the relationship? Is it like something like for one day or is the relationship for like the next 10 years? So how much maintenance do our partners need? And, and what about the IP? What about the in intellectual property that they are and we are creating? Who owns the IP in the end? Can I access their knowledge and can they access our knowledge? So we need to have the right monitoring, reporting and improving activities in place to manage this relationship. We want to make sure that we are mature and they are mature. We want to make sure we're like almost like equally mature because otherwise you end up with friction. So we need to manage our partners. What does it say? Partners support the organization in keeping the clock wound. Partners support the organization in keeping the clock wound. Yeah, practice what you preach. Hey, of course, it's all about getting to understand the concept of the 4P model for IT service management. And everything needs to exist in harmony and balance. So see if you can find some more yin and yang in the 4P model. Uh, some examples here. Component people. Yin, some are talkers. Yang, some are listeners. Processes. Some are formal, some are informal. Products. Some are highly complex, some are easy and intuitive. Partners. And some are open and willing, and some are close and resistant. So it's not about right or wrong or good or bad. There's just always yin and yang. So see if you can find the yin and yang eh, within this 4P model. Let's do a sample question. Hey, which one of the following statements is incorrect considering the concept of the 4P model? Answer A. Each of the 4P components should be considered for all services provided. Answer B. Strengths and weaknesses should be identified for each of the 4P components. Answer C. People and processes are vital components. And answer D. The 4P model is only applicable to IT organizations. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about the answer and then we'll move on. Okay, so the right answer is answer D. Can if you think of if you think about people, processes, and products and partners, of course that concept is applicable to any organization out there. Absolutely any organization. So what's in the next topic? In the next topic, we're going to look at the five major aspects of designing services. Uh, I mean, new or changed services. That's part of service design. Hey, until then, uh, live long and prosper. Nanu, nanu. And as always, I'll be back.